Robbie Triano, remember this name in the radio game. I'm telling you right now. He's the producer, one of them, for Sirius XM Big 12 Radio. Works mostly with Big 12 Today, which is a daily show, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Sirius XM Channel 375. Weekdays, go listen to it. He brings a fun energy to it. And I'm Brian Fenley. This is the Onto Something Podcast. I am with Fox Sports Radio and with Learfield. And this is an opportunity to showcase Robbie and point out what makes him inspirational. He's got some really neat stories over the course of his career so far that I think are of perseverance, of persistence, that a lot of people would benefit in hearing. So, Robbie, first of all, I appreciate you doing this. And I want to right off the get-go here ask you, where would you be in your life? Where would your career be? without Holly Rowe? That's a great question. Uh, whew. It's difficult because in 2018, I was a 23 year old who moved from Michigan to DC, had such little money. And the first show I'm put on is with Holly Rowe, someone that when I was younger, just watched on my TV all the time. And this was her first go in radio as well. She was transitioning a little bit more from the ESPN to during the week, now doing more. The second we start working together, we kind of knew we had this chemistry and what it's like working with her is she will just push you so hard, but in a loving type of way. And she really helped me be, like become who I am because she was, she was nurturing. She was very, I don't know. She, she would just push you to do something like she'd be like, Hey, I think it's a great idea if you get this guest. And like, if you don't, she will be very upset about it. So she kind of helped, you know, nurture me. And if I did something wrong, she had no problem telling me that's you should do it this way. And now where I am about to be 26 years old and having to work with her for the past three years, like I couldn't have think of anyone's like to have a better first job out of college and working with Holly. Why do you think she saw something in you to give you not just the time of the day, but to, and I, and I was reading your your bit on LinkedIn where she went to bat for you. She really did. She, she saw something in you. What did she see in you from the get go and, and why she put her name on the line for you, knowing the potential and the future that you have. Right. So in about to, in 2019, the head producer of the show, he was leaving the show to become a lawyer. And we were very under, like, we were very short staff at that time because this was the first year Big 12 radio was in motion. So I was one of the few people who was able for that promotion. And I was 24, 23 at the time, just, just turned 24. And every day I just grinded. I, I grinded, even though I was part time, I just made sure to get in early, get them everything they want. And when they came to who should we hire for this next role? I just made sure every day, like we centered the show around Holly Rowe. It wasn't me like, you know, doing everything to suck up to her. It was because I knew the talent that she could bring. There's no one in the world that has better stories than Holly Rowe. I promise you that she like, she can just rattle off like a Rolodex of as many college football stories, college basketball stories in the world. And everyone in the big 12 loves her. And I just made sure I worked as hard as she was putting in work every day. So when it came time to, you know, make that advance, um, I really think that I worked hard enough to make sure she understood, you know, what we could do. And I tried to make sure as a producer to, to make the show about the hosts. They are everything. I want to point to their strengths because like, it would be ridiculous for me to Holly Rowe, for me to give Holly Rowe, like give us the X's and O's. No, like, no, people come to hear her story. People come to hear some of her takes. So I just made sure we centered everything around our hosts and I think they really, they, they love that. And it, it was a little bit creative. I would say in the beginning, as a 24 year old, I was just spitting ideas, just like anything out there, seeing if anything would stick. And they thought some of it was good. So I, looking back, I don't know how this was a layered, like allowed to air some of the <laughs> things that we did, but uh, it, it somehow worked. <laughs> I like some of the mashups you do, like going out of breaks or going into breaks when, you know, you include interesting music that plays into like Lincoln Riley or Brian Kelly or stuff that you guys do, which is really fun. And I'm sure that having some creative opportunities there for you, it has to be very rewarding. But as much as Holly is such a well of stories, I want to get to one particular story. 
And when he actually got to meet her in person for the first time, knowing the priceless role that she had played in your life and how much she had mentored you, seeing her for the first time in person, what did that mean to you? Yeah, so a background is she's she does her shows from home. She does it on this Comrex. So I never got to meet Holly Rowe, even though every day we would talk. She's learned everything about my family, my girlfriend, everything about my life. But we had never met each other. It's just been over this Zoom call. So one day we were just doing the show and uh, she was like, hey, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. covering a WNBA game. Like, do you want to meet? And I was like to my girlfriend, like, we're pausing all of our plans. We're going to the gym. (laughs) We're like, no, we're going to meet Holly Rowe. And it was a really special dinner. We had about like two hour dinner and just to hear some of the stories of her traveling and just like the main thing I want to learn from that is like, how did she do what she is doing now? Because if she wanted to say something to ESPN, like, hey, I want to cover this. They're like, yes, you can go. And not many people in sports get the chance to do that. I think that is like she she knows like the talent that she has to do that. And during the quarantine, uh, because there was nothing for us to talk about, sure. like absolutely nothing. And we're covering Big 12 radio and there's no college sports. Every day is, will there be college sports? And it is, it is depressing. I will let you know that. But every day we worked and we made a two hour show each and every day. And it was just something because it was in one of the hardest times of our lives, in American lives. And we were just always there for each other each day. And to be doing that show with her was amazing because afterwards, like some days she would just like cry. She would just cry because it was just like such a difficult time. But the fact that her, Gay Bikert, and I always worked together each day, um, it was something special. And I will always like be grateful for Holly Rowe and that time meeting her. Um, I'm 6'2", and she is about 5'2". And I was like, I did not know you were this short, but you were such a mighty woman. You were so mighty. And uh, it, it was special. So mighty that you've said that you've never learned more from a single person. What would I learn about you? What would you learn about me? That's a great question. Um, To me, I think in this business, you have to have a lot, a lot of hard work and you have to be somewhat creative and a little bit zany. So for me, I think that, you know, the amount of effort I put into a show is honestly like almost too much because there's a lot of hosts I give a show prep to and they're like, okay, I just need to know what we're going to talk about and that's it. But I want to make sure that when a host gets something, they have nothing, nothing that they could like have a dead air about. They, I want them to honestly always have something to talk about, always something new, a refreshing take, because I think the worst part about radio is when you can tell a host doesn't know what they're like, what to talk about next. They're like spinning like, okay, and we can talk about this. And they're looking at the clock like, all right, three more until we should take our break. I think that is that that is the radio's worst thing. So for me, I think I just like putting a lot of hard work into the prep of the show. And I think sometimes just like being creative. I like to throw as many ideas off my host as possible. I like to see what exactly I can push them to. Like I have a host, I think you know him well. His name is Chris Plank. He is. Oh, I love Chris. Yeah. He is open to anything. And he is like the best host for for that. And then I have like Gabe Eichert, who was like, yes, let's do everything. And Holly Rose, sometimes she can be a little bit more reserved on the creativity because she just wants to talk. But I'm like, no, I think you would be great at this. And I think what really, you know, separates me, I don't, I, I I like to be humble, but I I like to say I like to work hard and um, I like to be a little bit creative. Robbie Triano is with us. I'm Brian Fenley. Of course, you can follow him on Twitter at the Triano Kid. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley. How is Gabe empowering for you, Robbie, in working on shows with him? So it's funny because it's it's interesting because when I started to get into radio or in this profession, he also started to get into radio, and Holly Rose started to get into radio as well. So we've really like kind of all formed together and grow through this. Um, and Gabe you know, as he started to learn through his radio journey, like coming from the NFL and being this star lineman at Oklahoma, this is where we could really like start to be like, okay, what do you want to do in your career path? And like, how can I help you with that? So with Gabe, he is excellent at like knowing the game, the X's and O's and that type and that type of scenario. I'd be like, that is your strength. I want to make sure we get you into a path where we can 
describe and have you be good at talking about that on radio, which is very difficult because it's hard to be like, all right, here's the X's and O's, but I can't show you that. So for us, it's been a, a weird type of, you know, finding out how he can be as descriptive as possible over the air without any visual clues. Sure. And it's been important for him. And now he has this awesome podcast called the Oklahoma Breakdown, which is this big, gotten massive um, in the Oklahoma area. And like we helped launch that with him. And it's been amazing to see him grow because he's creative and he honestly knows football more than anyone in the world. And I just want to bring that out of him. One of the ideas that easily is brought out of you is that you've said that failure scares you to death. How did you come to that mentality? Oh, man. Um, I can give an example because when I moved to D.C., I was 23. I was a part-timer making about 1400 a month. And I didn't realize this, but DC is incredibly expensive. And it's about, my rent in the beginning was about $1,000 a month. So I had about $300 to spare every month. On food, whatever I needed. And I was too embarrassed to ask for my parents for any money, any friends for any money, because I did not want to seem like a failure. And for me, I just grinded every day. I went into the office way too many hours early just to like watch people use the board. And I had a producer at the time, Davis Williams, who I probably bugged the hell out of because I was at the office way too early than I should be. But I just wanted to see what he was doing because I really wanted to take that next step. I, I had to in order so I could like make rent the next month. So for me, failure, it is something... It's it's good and bad to have as as a as a fear because I fear failure be, that makes me want to drive harder. But sometimes I feel like I I I'm afraid to do some ideas because I'm afraid they're going to fail. So it, it's a mix of both. But for me, I've been using it as a strength because I don't. It's very hard to stay in this field. Very hard, and I want to make sure I try everything as possible to either stay in it or further my career in it because. I mean, working around some people, I used to work in, in newspapers. I'm seeing all of my newspaper friends either switch jobs every year or just completely switch careers. Like it's difficult out here in this business. And I th think that if I don't use feel like failure as a fear, then I'm, I'm not really setting myself up. Yeah, that sense of urgency always there. Robbie Triano with us, producer of Sirius XM Big 12 Radio. I'm Brian Fenley with Fox Sports Radio in Learfield. What's an idea that you thought, Robbie, might not pan out? But here you are, you're very creative, and it actually worked well. Maybe it was something that was implemented in a show, and it actually hit, it went off well. So um, one idea that we didn't do that I'm sad that is now really important really really big is Gabe Eichert and I we invented what the Manning brothers are doing we were like <laughs> we want we want a service where we could just have funny people talk about the like and narrate the game we had that idea like two years before it happened and I'm so upset that didn't happen um, because I think that is still like people want to see either important cool people talk about stuff or funny people you know talk. I, I think that is something that is needed but one idea that you know, we had, and it's called prop the top off. And this is a great way for us to talk about the weekend games is one of our producers, his name is Josh neighbors. He is a degenerate gamble gambler, <laughs> as some of us would say, and he would create these beautiful props that would get people interested about the weekend. Like how many yards will do Vaughn score compared to this other big 12 player. And for me, like, I thought that was absolutely genius because not only am I now paying attention to those players during the games, but I'm like looking at the stats, like, Oh my God, are they, are they this close to getting it? And I thought that being around him, Josh neighbors, he is also an up and coming person in this field, but you know, bouncing ideas off of him. And like, I think you would be very good at this, like as this degenerate gambler. And I thought he, he nailed it. And it's just being like that, being around people and noticing their strength and like, Hey, I really think you should do something like this. I think that's something I've been somewhat, somewhat good at. And um, I think that's what you have to do as a producer is to bring your strengths out everyone else. 
one of the strengths that I think that you have, and this was even before you probably got to Sirius XM, I saw this video of you and you were dancing like in a play. <laughs> is this is this something that that so so you've always seemingly been comfortable with the spotlight what would I have learned from you with that age was that in high school was was yeah. that yeah when did that come when I when you would have been I mean you were breaking down the dance moves unlike anything I've ever oh, seen yeah. from anybody this was an I, I I knew right away when I saw that clip on I think it was your Twitter that I was like okay this guy he's comfortable when the spotlight is on him it's funny because uh in high school i was coming from a private school that my mom worked at and i went to public school and i didn't have any friends um or very few and i was five to my freshman year of high school i'm now six two so i wasn't as athletic as the time as i am now and my parents were like hey you should try out show choir and i'm like okay like whatever you know glee was popular at the time so i was like okay i'll try it and then i just found out like i'm a dancing machine i just i can't stop myself when i hear music i'm just unbelievable and it really did bring a lot of you know confidence to me where i don't know if i necessarily enjoy the spotlight a lot but having the ability to show things like radio so people can hear some of the things that i've done or the words that i say and that actually did help a lot because our senior year, uh, you have something called the senior solo and you do this big theatrical number by yourself. And I did smooth by Santana. And so for four minutes, I had me and these backup dancers and looking back, like the fact that I had that experience to not only like do something by myself, but in front of a bunch of people, a bunch of peers in my community, uh, it was important to me. And looking back, um, I think that is a reason why I feel somewhat confident because my, my dad is like, don't you get nervous talking on the radio? Like there's a bunch of random people out there listening. It's like, I think it's just, I think it's just, it's somewhat comforting to me because of my experiences prior in my life kind of helped me with that. Those experiences of you being in those plays and doing those four minute renditions, how did that help your confidence? And when your college career in, you know, you'd graduated, and you found a way and you thought that going the radio way would be the best way, knowing that you have to find a way to, to really have that thick skin, knowing you have to be resilient, knowing you have to, like you have been doing, been standing up for yourself and knocking on doors. So how did that self-confidence and that drive and that determination and that, that feeling of being okay with whatever scrutiny or, or, or whatever people are saying, how did that allow you the confidence to, to take on this career, knowing that it's very coveted and one in which it isn't the easiest to always get into? Yeah, so it's a, it's a great question. And confidence, I feel like I have to thank some of my parents for that, because if a lot of people tell their parents, hey, I wanted to become a sports journalist or all that, all they're like, OK, like get a better job, more money, something like that. My parents were always like, do what makes you happy. And for me, working in sports has always made me happy. I think sports is really the best way to learn, you know, anything about my life. I've learned patience by being a Detroit sports fan because we never <laughs> win. That's how I that's how I've learned to be patient. I learned how to like be a hard worker because my favorite piston growing up, even though I wasn't alive at the time, but my dad would always tell me about Dennis Rodman. He was the world's hardest worker, but he did not necessarily have the skills as like a Ray Allen or a Steph Curry to shoot the ball. He just loved to work. And for me, I thought that the thing I knew I always wanted to do was work in sports because I think they have the best stories in general. I think that any single sporting event you go to, you can find a story. And when I was, I was planning to become a sports writer this whole time, but when I got into radio, I just knew that it was the best way to tell stories because I look at Scott Van Pelt and he has these interviews, but they're like five minutes. And I'm like, that stinks. Like the, that, that amount of short amount of time is I don't think the best way to do it. Or even if you look at the late night shows, you look at Seth Meyers, their interviews with these famous people are four to five minutes. And I think that is not the correct way to interview these people. I think it's long form type of radio that we do or with podcasting, that is the best way to learn someone's story, like even what we're doing right now. And for me, the confidence was just my parents telling me to do this. And I was like, oh, okay, because I always knew the stories in sports were the things I, I loved about sports the most. 
The last question for you, and I think that's fascinating because, yeah, having a longer time to talk and having the long form conversation, like a lot of people will have ideas going into an interview, but it's so fun because you never know where the interview is going to go because it has longer time and right. you might get an answer and then you go down a road from that answer, you play off of it where you didn't initially think you would go, which makes it that much more real and the conversation more authentic and original. Where have you found that this could be professionally, personally, where your inner strength was relied on the most? That's a really great question. Um, hmm. That's very, that, that's thought provoking. And I, I, I enjoy that. Um, where my inner strength was relied on the most. Wow. Um, Growing up in what you do now, high school, college. I think I think it just that is, that is like a really I think people should be asked it every day so they can just have about five minutes just to sit down and like look at the board and like what is what is it? but um <laughs> I think for me it was when I came to Sirius XM um I didn't know anyone I didn't know the city at all. I had no, I had one friend here. I had one friend who worked, who went to my high school, who lived here. And that was it. And for me to somewhat show my confidence in that, um, I really had to somewhat be annoying and like, be like, Hey, hey, this is me. And I think one of the strengths about our show and our channel is we get some of the best guests out there when it comes to college sports. And for me, I just had to kind of be somewhat annoying to people be like, Hey, can you please come on? Like I, I have this guest in this. And I think that is where some of the confidence came from. Cause a lot of people were just like, ah, he won't come on anyways. I was like, I will, I want him to tell me, no, I want him to say, no, I can't come on. And I was, I just really tried. So I think some of that confidence that I did have is I guess annoying to some people. I think there's some sports information directors that are like, oh my God, this guy's emailing me again. But it was it was important for me to get the best people on. And that is another thing with Holly. She was like, I want this person on and you're going to get him in, I don't know, four hours. And I'm like, okay, well, I have to do. So then I'm making calls and I'm doing all that. So for me, um, I think the ability to just be kind of irrationally confident that was kind of the inner strength that helped me be where I am. Yeah, maybe that wasn't who you were initially, but then that ability to stand up for yourself like that and to really come across as assertive. And yeah, you, you don't know what their reaction is going to be, but you know that you're going to do everything in your power to make sure you get them on. And I feel like that notion of what you just described happens to be over the course of your life a theme of standing up for yourself and how you've done that, whether it's getting to radio, getting that promotion and putting your name out there, going in front of all these people in high school and doing these plays and dancing. Like you are someone who understands that, you know, you are your best advocate and it's really fun to see the way in which, which you're growing and you will continue to grow and obviously love the work you do with Sirius XM. Robbie Triano, on Twitter, give him a follow. All right, at the Triana Kid. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley with Fox Sports Radio. Robbie, this was a lot of fun, man. Thanks for opening up about your life, your career, how you got to where you are today, all the great stories with Holly Rowe, and big fan of yours, man. And keep up the great work. Awesome, Brian. I appreciate what you do here too. There's a lot of great stories out there, and I think you do a great job highlighting that. So appreciate you.